I'm Henry Gilliland, the Mechatronic Specialist with Electric Supply and Equipment. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get started with the Kinetics 5100 and show you how to use it as a standalone servo controller. The Kinetics 5100 has the ability to connect seamlessly with Rockwell Automation PLC systems. This allows a user to control this specialty drive with ease without any significant configuration. However, the Kinetics 5100 has several standalone operating modes. This means you're able to operate this drive without the use of an external controller. I am going to walk through the process of setting up the Kinetics 5100 in PR mode which is position command with internal register input mode. This mode will allow you to create index moves internal to the drive and execute them with digital inputs. Here's what you'll need to get started. Obviously a Kinetics 5100 servo drive. Our model here is a 2198-E1004-ERS. A servo motor made by Rockwell Automation, in this demonstration we'll be using a TLY-A110P-BJ62AA servo motor. You'll also need feedback and power cables that fit your motor. For standalone functionality, you're also going to need the I.O. breakout board. This part number is 2198-TBIO. In order to program the Kinetics 5100, you will need a USB cable, specifically a USB mini to USB type A connector. Lastly, you'll need to download and install the latest version of the KNX 5100C software if you haven't already done so. There's a link in the description below to Rockwell's Software Download Center where you can acquire this software. First, make sure to properly wire and power up your Kinetics 5100. For more information about how to do this, you can consult the Kinetics 5100 user manual. There are detailed wiring diagrams based on a given application. If you need a copy of this manual, there's a link for that in the description below as well. After the hardware is wired properly, the drive is powered up, and your USB programming cable is connected, now you can open up your KNX 5100C software. Click File and select New, and give the project a name. Then click OK. The correct COM port should already be selected. However, if you plug in your USB after you open the KNX 5100C software, you may have to click the refresh button to automatically configure the USB communications. Then click the add button. This will open up your new Kinetics 5100 project. In order to test communications and go online, click the offline slash online button at the top of the screen that currently shows offline. Make sure your firmware of your drive is up to date. It's almost always recommended to use the latest revision. Select Download All Parameters to Drive and then click OK. This will download all parameters to the drive. You may be prompted that there are some parameters that are not downloading. That's OK, we'll adjust those later. You will then be prompted that the download has finished Click the OK button and then reset the drive by clicking Yes. Finally, acknowledge the reset module OK. You're now online with the drive. The next step is to verify the motor configuration. In the function list window on the left side of the screen, select Motor Selection. The Motor Selection wizard will pop up. Change the data source to Catalog Number and click Change Catalog. Type in the part number of the motor you're using. In this example, we are using the TLY-A110P-BJ62AA. You may note that there are some X's in the part number in the selection list. This is because these characters identify mechanical information about the motor that are not important to the drive. After you pick the motor, select OK and the motor data will automatically populate the data sheet. Click Next twice to review the parameters that were populated then click download. You will then have a prompt just as before to download and reset the drive after downloading. Click yes to continue. Acknowledge the module reset. You should get a message that says that the download was successful. Click OK to continue. After you've completed this step, you can close out the motor selection wizard. The next step will be to change the operation mode. The default is set to position mode or PT mode. 
Up at the top left hand part of the screen, there's a drop down for this mode selection. Click on the drop down and select PR for position register input mode. Click yes to continue to download and reset the drive again. Then click OK to the reset module OK prompt. Now we can configure the digital inputs to operate the drive. Near the bottom of the function list, click on digital IO slash jog control. Click OK to the prompt to continue to the digital IO configuration window. In order to make changes to the digital IO, you will need to select the edit digital IO configurations checkbox. This will allow you to change the function of the digital inputs and the digital outputs. You can see that there's 13 digital inputs and six digital outputs. Click the drop down on the digital input to configure the function. Select the function. For digital input one, we will select homing switch and you must click OK in order for the change to take. Then configure the remaining digital inputs. We will set digital input 2 to servo on and digital input 3 to event trigger command 1. Anytime you make a change to the drive, you must reset the drive for the change to take effect. You can click the reset button at the top of the screen and then click yes to the prompt to reset the drive. After you're done editing the digital I.O., you must uncheck the Edit DIO Configurations checkbox. Now you can test the functionality of your servo system. You can test the digital inputs manually by checking the Manual Enable checkbox and then pressing the On Off Enable button. In this case, we can turn the servo on and then test the movement of the servo by pressing the left and right arrows at the bottom of the screen. Let's turn the servo off now we will need to configure an index move to be triggered by digital input 3. You can do this by using the PR mode editor at the bottom of the function list under motion control. To configure an event, select event on off setting under the general parameters setting. For event 1 that's being triggered by digital input 3, select PR number 51. Now we will need to edit PR number 51 as an index move. Scroll to the bottom of the mode setting menu until you see PR number 51. This is where you can configure the index that will operate when digital input 3 goes high. We will select constant speed control for this example and then set the target speed to 200 RPM. You will need to download these parameters to the drive before testing in order for these changes to take effect. You can download by clicking the download icon at the top of the screen. Click the download icon and then select all the parameters that you'd like to download. We will download all the parameters. Click OK, then click OK to the download OK prompt. Now we can go back to our digital I.O. screen to test this event trigger. Turn the servo on and then activate digital input 3 which should trigger this event. We can see that our servo is now operating in the forward direction continuously. Now you know how to set up and use the Kinetics 5100 in PR mode. If you liked this video, please be sure to subscribe to ESNE TV for all your mechatronics support needs. Thanks for watching.